first project is going to be converting this table into a vacuum table. So let's get started. First thing I'm trying to do is plan out uh, the different zones for the vacuum table. I'm laying out the, the fixtures that will be mounted up underneath and kind of planning where the, the valves will be uh, for the shutoff uh, for each zone. Here I have a two and a quarter inch end mill that I'll be using to surface the, the tabletop. I want to make sure everything's flat uh, to start. So I'm going to shave about a, a sixteenth of an inch off. Here I'm measuring for the tool uh, so the machine knows where that is and then touching top so it knows where the top of the table is. I'm just going to make a quick tool path um, in Aspire. Basically, I'm just setting up my, my material size, which is the tabletop size, the maximum size that my router can run, and then creating a rectangle and pocketing it using a pocketing tool path. And I'm making the, the long runs on the Y axis. Uh, that way it'll be less movement for the machine and then I'll be able to uh, run that a little bit quicker, hopefully. So, it's, like I said, it's just a pocketing toolpath and it's only about a sixteenth of an inch deep. And then I'm gonna run an additional run, basically on the same line of that rectangle that I ran to take out the corners that will be left because a pocketing toolpath is basically the inside of a tool or inside of a of a shape and uh, it since it's a round bit it'll leave those corners there so if I run also on the line with the same tool it'll clean all that up and I'll have a nice flat surface so what I'm going to do is just save it and export it um, and then here we go running it Here I forgot to tape up the holes. Yes, the vacuum is on. Um, I forgot to tape up the holes for the routers on either side of the spindle. So the dust is just flying through there because half of the, the uh, dust shoe is off of the table right now because it's on the edge. And it's just blown dust everywhere. But the closer we get to the center of the table, the less dust is actually being thrown out of those other holes. I wasn't going to stop it and tape it up, but i just deal with it. And so this is just going to run, surface the whole tabletop for me, and uh, then we're going to move on, end up changing the bit uh, to a 3 8 two flu uh, end mill, and then uh, run, run a program that I have made up to cut the holes for the drains and also the uh, the grids for each independent zone. Okay, we'll see how that turns out. So it's just making quick passes back and forth on the Y axis. I figured it would be a quicker, quicker run time if I actually did it this way rather than going on the, the X axis. Thank you. 
Here we go, all cleaned up and ready to go. Turned out really nice. So, again, I'm changing out the bit to a 3 8 two flute end mill. And once again, it will cut the and it will cut the uh, holes for the drain mountings and the uh, independent zones for the for the vacuum mill. And look at me this time. I remembered to tape up the holes <laughs> and try to have the vacuum suck a little bit better. Now just blow dust everywhere. So I'm going to start by cutting out the holes for the uh, drains that will be going in, the PVC drains, and then it will move on to cutting the grid for the different zones. Now, I, like I said again, I'm using a 3 8 inch bit, two flute, end mill. Um, I did make the program, so it's cutting down 3 8 of an inch. I should have probably gone a little bit less than that. Um, but it'll all work out in the end. Here, this is the shower drain. It's normally, uh, this little piece here, normally sandwiches a piece of rubber that will go on the underside of the shower. But I'm just gonna be using this up and under and mounting that that way without that top piece. But you can see that my holes are pretty well lined up um, just by mocking this up a little bit here. Again, those holes just need to be poked through. But this is how it'll look underneath when, when it's all mounted. Here's just cutting more stuff, more drains. And then, like I said, it'll move on to cutting out the, the grids for each zone.
so this turned out better than I expected. Nice sharp corners and edges on all the cuts. As you can see here, But the problem is with this, as it sits here right now, is that by milling it the way that I did, it allows air to be able to travel through the material, not only in these little channels that we created here, but also laterally. Because uh, the material, the MDF, will allow air movement not only in one direction but in all directions so how I'm solving that is by then sealing it by painting it all I'll seal every little nook and cranny that I can get to just to slow it down I know it won't be a hundred percent if I wanted to be a hundred percent I'd make it out of something you know that was not not MDF um, but I think this this solves the problem pretty well So I'm just covering all my bases by painting everything and You know letting it dry Checking it all out making sure I didn't miss anything but the main thing you want to make sure is that you have is your perimeters of the different zones sealed well. Like here, you can see I missed a little spot there. So I'm going to be going back and touching that up. But I think it turned out pretty well. And after it dries, then I can uh, start with all the plumbing and hooking up the, the vacuum. I'm making up a vacuum manifold. And these are the, the drains that I'm gonna use that'll be underneath to attach all the PVC piping and everything else. And that'll be in our next video. Thanks for watching.